Welcome back to the Hour View Podcast. On today's episode, I welcome my guest, Talia Flores. Join our conversation as she tells us how she is stomping on CP one day at a time. would like to welcome everyone back to another episode of the Our View podcast, where we aim to raise awareness, educate, and change the tone of conversation about disabilities. I am happy to welcome my guest to the podcast. She is Tylea Flores. So welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. It's oh, such yes. a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you. And uh you uh, found me on Instagram, I believe, and yeah, uh, you followed Stomping on CP. Yes, yes. So you, um, I, I always search for, uh, you know, different creators, content creators on uh, social media who are uh, doing their part to raise awareness about disabilities. And uh, I came across your page, and um, you know, I followed you, and you followed me back, and then you. Uh, reached out to me through the podcast request form that I have on my uh, link tree. And then we just, uh, you know, arranged this, this interview to happen. So uh, I'm grateful to have you here and uh, thank you for being willing to uh, take the time to talk to us. No problem. Yeah. And to share your story, which I really think is, um, no problem. which is very important. So um, to get started, could you tell us who is Ty Leah? Can you just explain? What? Yeah, who you are and, and what you do, and just um, tell us a fun fact about you. <laughs> well, my name's Tylia Flores. I am a 25-year-old disability activist. I was born with spastic dysplasia. I only weighed one pound, two ounces. Doctor said I would never make it, but here I am 25 years later. And darn it, I forgot to cancel the free trial to cerebral palsy. So there you go. <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it, it's amazing how uh, my story I, I've shared on the podcast is, is um, similar in that the doctors, you know, didn't expect me to make it past a certain age as well. Um, and I'm 39. So it's, it's really just um, really interesting how, uh, you know, it's, it's great to hear stories where people um, have beaten the odds. You know, you were born at such a low weight. And so, you know, it's uh, at the time, I'm sure it was difficult to, um, you know, th expect that you would make it. And like you said, 25 years later, you're like, here you are. And you're really, uh, you know, doing a lot of yeah, great things. Yeah. Just, just stomping on CP one day at a time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so can you um, explain to the listeners what is uh, CP and uh, how that diagnosis impacts your life every day? CP is a neurological condition that affects one or two parts of the brain, but it mostly affects your cerebral part. But you mostly won't have full mobility and you'll constantly have stiffness within the side your cerebral palsy is most affected on and it varies from person to person like I'm affected on my on my left side more so my right so I don't know if you can see this side is different from this side mm -hmm. and on on my left side I have swan neck deformity and there's tightness there versus <laughs> my right side looks normal mm -hmm. so it's very different different uh types of cp and many different in in funnier terms results may vary yes <laughs> yes results may vary and i love that you said you forgot you forgot to cancel the uh free trial of it so, yeah <laughs> yeah so that is uh it's it's great and people uh I, I often laugh about, um, you know, my diagnosis and some of the stuff that happens to me because of my spina bifida and people are just like, how can you laugh at that? And it's like, you have to laugh at some things you have to make, you know, you have to keep it light because, you know, living with a disability can be very hard and very heavy sometimes. Yeah. Like, you know, 
I go to the doctor's office and they say, oh my God, this is the worst case of cerebral palsy I've ever seen. I told the doctor, well, ma'am, if this is the worst case of cerebral palsy you've ever seen, may God bless you because there's a lot of worst cases compared to mine. Like there's some people that have to use feeding tubes and et cetera. And you've probably seen the same thing with spina bifida, but I always say CP's having a party. Yes. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, um, it, it is, it's, it's uh, you know, everybody is different. Their diagnosis impacts them differently. And, um, you know, for me, like I said, living with spina bifida, it's, it's difficult at times. So to be able to, you know, make a, a joke and, and to laugh at, at certain things, it's like you have to, because it's, uh, you know, you have to keep keep it light. So it's, it's great that you're able to, uh, you know, have these little, uh, little terms and things and that, uh, forgot to cancel the free trial subscription. And like, that was really, <laughs> that was really great. <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah, I, I totally forgot to do that. What was I thinking? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I know, um, uh, one of the things I, I noticed is, uh, you have a very positive attitude about things. Um, what are, what are some ways you have been able to cope with having your uh, cerebral palsy diagnosis and how have you been able to remain positive? Well, I'm gonna tell you something, writing. Writing has given me the ability to stay positive and let go of any negative energy that I have. So whenever I'm having a bad day or I'm going through something negative, I write about it and I publish it. and. I also have a book that I wrote at the age of 16. I'm currently working on my second book. Oh, that's um, great. That's in my life. And writing has always, writing has always been my go-to for everything and reading books and not watching negative things go on in the world. Like I don't watch the news. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah. it affects your mindset. So what I like to do is I like to pick up a book, read, listen to music, you know, and connect with other people that do the same thing like you. Yes, it is so important um, to disconnect from things, from social media, from the TV and all of that. And I love that you said you write because um, that's something that I do as well. I write, I love to write. Um, I've been writing in journals for uh, probably 20 years, 20, 22 years. Wow. Now, probably. That's, that's really amazing. And I recommend you keep it up. And I, I always tell people, instead of writing about your thoughts on Facebook that are negative, write it in a journal. Cause then nobody sees it. Yes. And that is, mm -hmm. um, that's exactly how I started writing because, um, and actually it's, uh, my dad passed away in 1999 and I'm so um, sorry. Yeah, he had uh, prostate cancer, but um, I, I started writing then, um, like around the time that he was sick, because it was such a, a difficult time, a sad time. Um, and I started writing about that. But then I, um, uh, someone had told me um, to get different journals to write, you know, to write all the negative um, or sad things in one journal and to write, uh, to start a gratitude journal was one of the ideas I was given. Uh, so to write only positive things in that one. And, um, you know, that has, writing has really been uh, so, so great and so beneficial for me as well to uh, stay positive. So I definitely uh, can relate to, can definitely yeah, relate know, to that. It's quite a coincidence that you mentioned your dad having cancer because when my best friend got sick with cancer, that's when I started writing too. And mm -hmm. then after he died is when I published the book in his memory. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you, you mentioned you, you um, published a book and you're working on a second book, correct? Mm -hmm. Great. Can you tell us about, um, tell us about your first book and then um, about the second book that you're, you're currently well, working on? Well, James Ticking Time Bomb all started from a tragedy in 2010. My best friend passes away from a brain tumor. So I needed a way to channel my grief from that. And then one day, I'm at Barnes and Noble, I'm drinking a Starbucks, and I had a daydream of me signing books of my own, and I came back home and opened up my word processor and wrote, hey, see that kid over there, and that was the start, and then after that, I started branching out into 
all the misconceptions about CP, and I decided that I wanted to write about cerebral palsy. Wow. Yeah, so what is, uh, what is James Ticking Time Bomb about? It's about a teen father who has cancer, but he's trying to figure out what his life purpose is before he dies. And you can get that on Amazon. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, it, it's really, really awesome that you chose to uh, write that book in memory of your friend and uh, as a way, like you said, as a way to channel your grief and, uh, you know, to put something out in the world, something positive and just... Um, you know, help, help people understand, uh, you know, your friend and your friend's story and, and things that he uh, might've been uh, going through at the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what is your second book? Uh, what is that about? Can you tell us my a little second bit about book, it? My second book that I'm currently working on now, it's hopefully the title is going to be Why I Advocate. And it's basically a memoir on my life during the pandemic and before the pandemic and the reasons why I decided to start advocating for those with CP and other disabilities. That and is I started, great. And I started writing that in July after sitting by the side and I was like going through writer's block and my mom's like why don't you write a book about the reasons why you advocate for CP and talk about your life and really just go through the emotions and that's exactly what I've been doing since July wow and I'm that halfway is... through it now so I'm excited that is very that's something to be excited about and again using your own your own life experiences of what you're dealing with, uh, you know, before and during this uh, pandemic to, uh, you know, share your, your story and, and why it, it is important to advocate and to be an activist in the world of uh, the disability world to make sure that changes are being made. So that is, uh, that's really great that you're using, you know, using this time uh, to create something like that. Exactly. The way I look at it is, yes, the pandemic is negative. I can't go to theme park, but I can be at home and write, you know, and I could change the world. At least we have to connect with other advocates. At least, at least we have those different opportunities versus if this would have been in the 90s, we would have been screwed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thankfully for technology, we have a... Uh... Yeah, if this would have been in the 90s... If this would have been in the 90s, we would have been like, what do we do next? But thankfully, we have Zoom and we have... And the way I look at it is the pandemic is a time for us to reflect on what we want to do to be better advocates. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely um, opened my eyes to a lot of things. Uh, that's how I started this podcast. It I created it um, last uh, spring and I launched it in June of 2020 because, yeah, because it really, um, I still wanted to make sure my message was getting out. I wasn't able to uh, talk to people in person as I was used to doing, um, but I, I had a microphone, I had a computer that had a camera and I said, you know, I need to uh, still make sure my message gets out. So to create the podcast, it was... Um, a little out of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, but as I've done more interviews and, and had more conversations with people and, uh, you know, they, they've really turned away from being interviews and just being conversations. So that's, I think, um, yeah, sometimes I think that's what the important thing is. <laughs> I commend you because sometimes you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable in order to succeed. Yes, that is so true. That is so, so true. <laughs> um, and I've definitely uh, have become more comfortable again, talking to, uh, you know, again, the technology has been great because it does allow us to connect with other people. Um, and, and sometimes that can be difficult to connect with people through a computer screen, but I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed all of the conversations that I've had. And I am, uh, you know, again, grateful for you for uh, reaching out and um, wanting to talk with me today. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Um, so I'm, uh, again, we're doing this on Zoom and I see um, your logo behind you. Um, so it's, uh, okay, Stomping on CP is your 
uh, your brand that you have and the logo is great. It says cerebral palsy and it's a, a shoe print. <laughs> so um, can you tell us a little bit about that and how you, uh, how you came up with that great name and um, what, what your purpose is and your mission is with this, uh, with this brand? <laughs> okay. How I, how I came up with the, with the name. I was watching American Pickers and I was thinking of crazy names like the CP Queen, but no, that was already taken. The Unstoppable CP, or which that didn't make sense. And then I'm like, hmm, what does an elephant do when it's mad? It stomps. And I just say, you know what? I'm going to stomp on CP. So that's where that name came in. And my vision with it is to spread awareness for CP and debunk the stigmas. Yes. Yes, that is, um, again, so important. I am um, glad that you are uh, doing that. And I, I love the logo. And uh, for those of you who are uh, listening and not um, watching this on YouTube, it's, uh, it's a great logo and it, it works very well. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love it. I thought about changing it several times, but I'm like, no. No, definitely don't. <laughs> so, um, so uh, can you tell us, uh, you know, you talked about having uh, the cerebral palsy diagnosis and how it impacts you. Um, can you tell us what you feel most people misunderstand or don't understand about uh, your diagnosis and, um, you know, and how it, how it affects you? What people don't understand about my diagnosis is that it just doesn't last in childhood. It's forever lasting. It's like when you're a child, you get all the health care benefits you need. But once you're an adult, they kick you out of the Willy Wonka factory like Violet was kicked out when she had that gum. And you're carried out by Oompa Loompas. <laughs> and it's a fact. It's affected me greatly because I can't get all the benefits I wanted. Like I went from having physical therapy two times a week for an hour each week to now only getting a half an hour and six sessions a year. Wow. Think about that. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Um, it's, it's very tough. Like you said, a lot of the uh, services that are available when you're younger, they, you know, they, they're less available when you hit 18 and then when you hit 21, um, and then when you hit 22, it just goes downhill from there, my friend. Right. Yeah. And you have to really fight for, um, you, know, you really have to fight for things. And uh, services like physical therapy are very important for someone, uh, you know, for people with certain diagnosis, because it helps stretch out those muscles and it helps keep your, uh, you know, keep your mobility strong. And, um, you know, so to have certain services uh, denied or, uh, the hours lessened over time, it can be, um, can be very dangerous and, 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 um, you know, cause a lot more issues than, than you're used to. Exactly. And I noticed with me, physical therapy is going to be needed for the rest of my life as much as sometimes I may not like it. Um, uh, my doctor told me when I was like 16, that because of the type of the CP you have, you're going to have to go to physical therapy for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you have trouble finding motivation after they cut you off. Right. So now I do my physical therapy sessions from home and I do aqua therapy if it's not too cold out. Yes. Yeah. And you just have to, um, you know, you, you have to become creative in your own, in your own ways sometimes to uh, develop, you know, your own forms of physical therapy and, and your forms of, uh, you know, your forms of, of, of physical therapy that you're, you're not able to get through uh, medical care and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And another thing that I wish insurance companies would do is understand that we need the medical equipment and it shouldn't cost $30,000 to get a new wheelchair or a new bath chair or a, a handicapped accessible van. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. my parents, my parents, luckily they're they're fortunate enough to be able to afford i have four different wheelchairs you want to know why because the insurance only covers one power wheelchair every five years but we never had the handicap accessible van 
So every time I would need to go out, they would have to call the ambulance. And my parents were like, no, -uh, we're not doing that. We're just going to pay out of pocket for wheelchairs. But even that gets stressful too. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, um, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's, I don't, I don't even know why it is, but uh, a lot of medical equipment that we require, you know, it's, it's not that we would like to have a uh, new wheelchair every couple of years. It's like we need a new wheelchair every couple of years because our bodies change and yeah, wheelchairs. Change. Yeah, and the wheelchairs that we use are specifically built for our body frame and for the way that we sit. And, um, you know, so we need to update those every few years. And, and the cost of wheelchairs and other equipment that we um, are, are necessities for a lot of people with disabilities are crazy expensive. Yeah, and a lot of people with disabilities, unfortunately, according to statistics, like 80% of us live in poverty. Right. Yeah. And we can't afford, you know, a lot of people cannot afford those, uh, uh, you know, those, those new uh, versions of equipment that, that they need. And, uh, you know, it's often denied by insurance. I was denied a wheelchair. Um, I think it was two or what? three times. Yeah. I think it was two or three times because they were saying Why? some of the pieces, uh, some of the parts that we were uh, putting on the wheelchair were not medically necessary. So it was um, oh uh, the tires that are like solid all the way through. They, they don't have the uh, tubes in them. So you can't pop the tires. And they were saying that it was, um, that was not medically necessary and that the wheelchair would be used for uh, recreational purposes. So. Um, <laughs> um, do they not understand that you have spina bifida? Yeah. And it's like, I like to go outside. So. <laughs> You know, I like to I'm use my chair stay, outside. I'm not going to stay in my house because in, th that's the same thing with me. I'm like, I'm not going to stay in my house because of insurance, you know? Right. You know, so it, it's really just, um, and, and having to fight for these types of things should not be, it, it shouldn't be. Like you shouldn't have to. It shouldn't to, exist. Yeah, you should not have to fight for things that you need. It's not that we, again, it's not that we want these things. We need them, uh, you know, to make our lives more, uh, accessible and and to free uh, to free ourselves so we don't have to sit in the house all the time and uh, you know so it's like we and so that it goes back to the work that you're doing about the advocacy and and uh, working to improve certain things for those who have disabilities it's very important because uh, I, th I think it, it goes back to the stereotypes that exist about people with disabilities that uh, you know, people feel like we don't do things or we can't do things and we, we don't go outside. We don't like to have fun. And it's like, all of that stuff is and we so do. not true. Yes. It's so not true. For we one thing, we for love going out. For one, thing I, for one thing, I love going to the Claremont Brewery and listening to the like country music and just getting me a Miami Vice yeah, <laughs> or a Coke and rum, depending on the day. And I'm just like wearing my cowgirl boots and my hat. And I'm just like, yeah, sing me a song. Like yes, yes, I know, love I'm concerts. <laughs> I'm I'm typical. I'm a country girl. I'm really typical. I'm like everybody else. Yeah. The only difference is I make I make wheelchairs look sexy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I you know that's I'd the like, only difference. Yeah, I like concerts. Hey, I like a margarita. <laughs> what did you say? Oh yeah, a margarita, a margarita frozen or on the rock sounds right about good right now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like five o'clock somewhere. It is, <laughs> you know, and it's really just, uh, again, this ac advocacy work that we are doing is so necessary. It's much needed um, and, and there's room for everybody to, to do it. And we need the help, not just of those who have disabilities, those without disabilities as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, cause that's how we start changing things. And we need to talk to uh, these insurance companies and, and you know, I, I know it's not the individual people that we talk to, it's the companies as a whole um, who have these, these outdated thoughts, I'll say. Uh, yeah, you know, they were, they they believe it or not insurance companies continue the stigmas yes 
Yeah. So it's really, um, you know, getting to a, a place where we can have these conversations of, um, you know, of, of how we can fix these, these situations where people with disabilities are seen as whole people and seen as people who, again, like to go out, like to participate in activities and, and do things. So this was, um, this was a great conversation. I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, I'm glad that we had this uh, time to converse with each other and to hear about your story and the great work that I'm you're so doing. I'm so glad. Yeah. Can you just Thank mention- Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Um, can you just uh, mention where people can find you on social media so they can follow you and uh, keep up with all of the great work that you're doing and also uh, where they can find your, uh, your book? Okay, you can find me at Instagram at Stomping on Cerebral Palsy, Twitter Stomping on Cerebral Palsy 01, and Facebook is Stomping on Cerebral Palsy with Tylea, and my book is available on Amazon. Yes, great. Thank you so much, Tylea, for your time today, and uh, for- You're again, welcome. Yeah, and again, for um, just sharing your story and your experience, and I'm um, uh, very happy to have met you and I'm glad that uh, you know we have something in common with writing <laughs> and uh, I'm glad that uh, you know I'm glad that yeah. writing has been something that you have found to uh, help you and congratulations on your book I'll keep an eye out for your second book that's really exciting <laughs> for sure yeah so you have a great day and I will be in touch okay see you see you soon Thank you for listening to this episode of the Our View podcast. Leave us a review wherever you listen and let us know what you liked about this episode. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to follow us on all social media platforms for more disability-related content at Our View for Life. That's O-U-R-V-I-E-W, the number four, L-I-F-E. If you listen to this episode on your phone, take a screenshot and post it to your Instagram or Facebook stories and be sure to tag us. We thank you for listening and take care.